guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to be doing a script breakdown. One thing to consider right off the bat is that there's what I would call two kinds of scripts that you may want to work with. And really, depending on which of these two approaches you want to take is going to dictate whether you really would need to do coding or you can just do recording. So if you're doing a script or you want a script that essentially is just a repeat of a sequence of like clicks and tools and stuff that you would use in PaintShop Pro and it's just you know, you do the same thing every time and you don't want to do it every single time and you just want to automate it. You can record that script and then just play it back every time you want to do those operations. Where I think coding and doing more, you know, advanced kinds of things comes into play is if your script or the way you want it to operate requires the following. Either user input, so something beyond just the inputs in a regular dialog box, say like, how many rows or columns for generating something or how far they want something to move. Another would be if your script needs to rely on loops or conditions, like it has to repeat some operation over and over again, or if one condition is met, you want to do one thing versus another. Another reason is uh, that you may want to actually get into the coding arena is if you're needing to do some kind of mathematical calculation. So whether that's something that is based on the dimensions of the image or doing a division or a multiple of that, or if you're wanting to use a random number generator or any, any number of things where math is involved, you're going to need to get to the code level. So by script breakdown, what I basically mean is we're going to be recording a script and then we're going to be looking at that script in both the script editor and in code. And the goal of this video is not to like teach you how to write code or how to do really fancy things with script. This is really more meant to be a kind of introduction that just helps to demystify, you know, the code representation of what scripts are. So if you're looking to kind of get into this level of complexity and this level of control, uh, this video is meant to just try to ease, uh, you know, us into this topic. Now, if you're new to scripting or if you're new to coding, um, it's probably going to seem like I'm moving really fast because there's going to be probably a lot of terms that you're not familiar with. Uh, but just remember, you can always adjust the playback speed in YouTube's playback settings. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so just to get started, uh, as you can tell, the view is probably very different than what you're used to on my YouTube videos. Uh, PaintShop Pro is quite squished and to make room primarily for our text editor, which is where the code's gonna be. And I wanted to do this layout just because I want to be able to see both the code and what we're doing in here at the same time as we kind of go through this. Now, slight difference in PaintShop Pro itself. Um, I do have the script toolbar up here as well as the script output. Normally I have the script output on a second monitor just so it doesn't crowd my workspace as much, but I'm putting it here just for demonstration purposes. If you want to be able to bring up these two windows, you can always click right click on any one of the toolbars and then under toolbars, you'll wanna to make sure that script is checked or for the output, you'll wanna to go to palettes and make sure script output is checked. Now to explain the editor that I'm using real quick, uh, I'm using a program called Notepad++ primarily. Um, it's just because I've used Notepad++ for a really long time uh, for other coding related kinds of things. Notepad++ has the ability to do color coding for the different syntax of different languages and in particular PaintShop Pro scripting languages in Python. So you can do some things in settings to make it so that a PSP script can show up color coded and we'll see that in a little bit. But uh, another editor that's really good that would work just as well would be like VS Code. Or if you have a different editor of your choice, you can use that. By default, I think it's just going to use Windows Notepad if you try to launch it from PaintShop Pro. But you can always change that setting by just going to File, Preferences, File Locations, and then choose Python Source Editor. And then in here, you just want to browse to whatever program you want to use. So in my case, I have it pointing to Notepad++. So now I have this starting image of this sort of aerial view of a landscape that I got from Pexels.com. 
And what we're going to do is just record a set of steps as sort of our initial script that we'll begin to play with. And so what I'm going to demonstrate is how we can create a script to create a luminance mask for, excuse me, for this image. So the way we can do that is we can very just simply go to our scripting toolbar, hit record, and then start doing whatever operations we would want to do. So in my case of wanting to do a luminance mask for this image, First, I would want to right click and duplicate it. And then with that duplicate layer already selected, go down to my mask button and say from image. And then with this dialog box set up, uh, let's pay attention to just a few things. So there's the image itself as the source. We're gonna choose source luminance for the type of mask. And we're going to make sure that invert mask data is unchecked. And we'll see how these details are gonna come into play in a little bit, but we'll hit okay. And we'll see that it's created our masks. Now, one thing that I know for me oftentimes when I create a mask is that um, it does a pretty good job of, you know, separating maybe lights from darks, but it doesn't create enough separation. And so oftentimes when I create a luminance mask, I always end up going to adjust brightness, contrast, and levels. And then I do some kind of adjustment here so that I can get the whites really white and the darks really dark. And that's usually just a matter of bringing the sliders in. So I'm just gonna stick with some arbitrary values and hit okay. And now all of our steps are basically done. So then we can go to this floppy disk icon and say save script recording. And then we just got to give it a name. Now, one thing you'll notice is I have mine saving in a folder called recorded. So there's a lot of different ways that I work with scripts. Usually I record and then I'll take those and incorporate them into other scripts or I'll evolve them into something a little bit better, nicer, cleaner, whatever you want to call it. And so I have a folder structure that kind of, you know, houses these different stages of the scripting development. But just when I'm trying to kind of capture some code by recording steps, um, I save it here. And if you want to make it easy on yourself so that you can replay the recorded scripts, you'll just want to make sure that that folder is already pointed to by PaintShop Pro to run scripts. So in this case, since I did a luminance mask, I'll call it a luminance mask script. And so then, like I mentioned, as long as we're already pointing at that folder, PaintShop Pro should be able to find it in the scripts dropdown, and there's our luminance mask script. So now, if we undo everything we just did, and we just run this as is, then we'll see, you know, the script output tells you all the things that it's doing, and then you can see that it recreated that whole same scenario without us having to do anything except press play. And so this, like I mentioned earlier in the beginning, is as far as you would need to go if this is all you wanted. If you didn't want to do any more, um, you know, playing around with any kind of if conditions, loops, user input, or math, or anything, you could just sit right here and be good and never have to look at any code. But now before we jump into code, I do want to show you one thing that can sort of be the intermediary step, and that's the script editor. So if we have the script of choice selected, and we click on the script editor, what you'll see is, you know, we have these dialog box or these, these text boxes up here that allow you to add some customized information for your script. But then we come down here and we see all these rows. And what we'll see is there's a number of different things in here, but kind of buried within all of these lines are the things that we can recognize that we did. So part of my luminance mask operation was I needed to duplicate I needed to actually create the mask from an image, and then I did levels. Now let's let's walk through these real quick. This enable optimize script undo is essentially something that's kind of default there, just so that if you're trying to record your script and you're kind of messing up and you're hitting undo, it's not going to capture all those commands. Um, but now that we've fully recorded our script, we don't really need that anymore. So the script editor actually allows you to edit and delete lines right in this view. So I could come in here and I could say, well, now that I've recorded it and I'm not gonna be recording it again, I can delete this line. As well, there was a few points where I was clicking on layers and changing their visibility. So it has nothing to do with actually what the script is intending to do. So I can also delete each of those. 
And so now what we're left with is basically no kidding the operations that we needed to do for the luminance mask. So since I've changed it, I can hit save. One other thing I'll mention about this view is that um, there's these drop down combo boxes that change how the script is presented to the user. There's default, interactive, and silent. Default um, is all dependent on what you set this mode to be, and this toggle execution mode just allows you to switch between interactive and silent. Interactive means that it's going to bring up a dialog box, say for like the example of adjust layers. Whereas silent mode is basically saying, it's going to just take the values that you had chosen at the point of recording the script and just automatically set them without ever presenting any dialog boxes. So it'll run all the way through without ever pausing. So as you can see, you can do a lot in just the script editor itself without ever having to touch any code. But let's now take a little bit, let's take a little bit of time to look at the code itself. And from this view, the easiest way to bring up the code would be to click on this text editor button. And what that would do, if I didn't have Notepad++ already open, in my case, is it would launch Notepad++ and then present the code, as you can see on the left here. However, since I want to actually kind of introduce this code side, I'm going to keep the script editor up. So once again, we have our layer duplicate, mask from image, and color adjust levels. And if we were to look at this script here, we should be able to visually make really obvious connections, right? So this information up here, the author copyright and description we can see is represented in this little definition up here called script properties. So for example, if we were to change one of these fields and hit save, and then come over to our editor, it'll say, hey, this has been changed externally. Yes, let's reload, and there you can see the field gets updated. One little tip here I found, I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but if you end up filling out all of these, these three fields here, um, when you try to use the script editor in subsequent sessions, uh, it's going to go straight to the code rather than bringing up this dialog box. I'm not sure why, um, but if, if, you, if you want to actually have this box come up, uh, don't fill all of the information out. But anyway, getting back to the script commands. So, you know, what we'll see is you have this function, and that's what this is, is a function called do. And essentially, this is the entry point. Like whenever you say run script by clicking on this play button, this is essentially where PaintShop Pro is going to go when it tries to run your script, is it's going to enter this function and then start executing the commands in the sequence from top to bottom. And you can see the sequence or the, the actions or the, the you know, commands are really just these blocks, these individual blocks of code that you see here. So even the things that we deleted, their, their comments are still here. And to just to clarify what these are, anything in Python, which is what this language is written in, that is preceded with a pound symbol or hashtag means it's just there for information. It's not actually code that's being executed. If I deleted this, it makes no difference to the script. Same way with these, just comments, no change to the script. And the simple breakdown of these commands is that each of them is kind of like a call to an API or a function built into PaintShop Pro called AppDo. And the way the AppDo knows what to do is by passing it this identifier, which is its name. So we're saying AppDo layer duplicate, AppDo mask from image, but this has more info because we need, we need more info to do a mask from image. And if you look real close, you'll see that these parameters here match exactly the fields that were in the dialog box that we entered when we created our mask. And then we do app do color adjust levels, and you'll see levels has a whole lot of its own other parameters that are necessary. And then finally, what you'll see is that each of these commands has this sort of general settings, you know, area. 
And the general settings are just attributes that are common to all commands. And you can see specifically it has to do with the execution mode, which is that same section that we talked about in here, right? It can be default, interactive, or silent. And that's represented in code by this def or execution mode. And we could change this to default, silent, or interactive. So to now learn a little bit more about kind of this relationship between scripting, some of its parameters, and even the script editor, what we can do is select levels, the levels command, and then let's say edit. So what that's going to do is actually bring up the levels dialog box. And so right now, the way it's set, these are the values that I happened to set when I recorded the script, but maybe that's not what I really want. Let's say really what I want is for it to have the default values so I can hit reset, brings all the values back to default, hit okay, and then I can hit save. And then if I come back to my script, what we'll notice is in the RGB, there were some you know non-standard values here and those are representative of what my sliders were at the time. But now having reset to default, All right, so switching gears just a little bit, uh, but relevant because this may be a situation you might find yourself in, especially if you're starting to uh, dabble with code. So, uh, you know, we'll say, for example, uh, what I one thing I found is that when, um, you know, messing with the script editor, a script that's already been recorded, uh, I found sometimes it can kind of mess up the the actual commands. And so here's an example of, um, you know, our, our adjust levels command got kind of truncated on the bottom end. So if we try to run this, it's going to give us an error, right? And it'll look something like this and it'll say, hey, your levels command, you know, your syntax, uh, you have a syntax error, which basically means there's something in here that doesn't follow like the Python standard. But instead of going too far into that, um, you know, essentially where you want to get to is just being able to say, well, maybe maybe I messed up my levels command. So what I can do is I can select that entire thing and delete it, clear out my script output window, make sure I save, and then let me try running it again. And we'll see it'll run now, but it doesn't call levels because we've removed that command. And this is another benefit now of working in code versus say the script editor is, let's say you have this long script that you've been working on for a long time and you just realized, ah, oh, I need to add one more command, you know, somewhere, you know, who knows? Like this isn't a long script, but just pretend with me that I want to add one more command in here that, you know, you can't do that in the script editor. The script editor doesn't actually provide a facility to just add commands. However, what you can do is you can hit record once again, and then I can say adjust brightness contrast levels, and, you know, just default settings, sure, that's fine. Hit OK, and then now just save that one command by itself. So I could call it levels. And then now if I bring that command into my editor, I can see, you know, I've got that optimized undo, but I can very simply just copy this whole adjust levels command and paste it in the script I was working in. And now I have levels returned back to my script and or you could say I've added it to a script that didn't have it previously. So then if I undo in here again, clear my output window, and then run it, what we'll see is not only did it run all the way through, but it also ran that newly added levels adjustment. So you can always be incrementally building your scripts just by recording other scripts and adding it into your code. Now, one thing for sure, I don't really uh, nominally like to have the settings in like levels, for example, for a mask be preset for me. Like usually that's some point of adjustment that I need to make. So one other change I may want to make in my code, apart from reverting all of the values to default, is I may want to make this one command interactive. So what I can do is just change default to interactive.
And so now I've saved that, I've reset my RGB to default, I've changed the execution mode to interactive. If I go back to PaintShop Pro, undo to revert back to where I was, and now if I run my luminance mask script, what we'll see is not only does it create the luminance mask, it brings up levels, but because it's in interactive mode, now I have to set the values or just click OK. And what we can also see is that the defaults have been returned so that I'm starting fresh every single time. So that's it for this one. Like I said, just an introduction, trying to kind of correlate things that are happening in PaintShop Pro with the way the code looks in a PSP script. As you can see, what I've kind of covered are the parts that are pretty straightforward. The parts that get a little bit more challenging or are a little bit more esoteric are when you're trying to decipher like what these values mean or why, for example, in this case, when we created our mask is source image reference as zero rather than the file name. But that's like a whole other different topic and that's that's also where you know, it's going to take a little bit of research on your part. Um, some things I would recommend highly are uh, learning the Python language. There's a lot of good resources online out there because Python is a very common language. And then also on the PaintShop Pro forums, there's a very specific scripting page there. And there's a lot of really good resources out there as well as a lot of really smart folks uh, who are available to answer questions if you have some on that forum itself. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you have any questions about scripting or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me or the channel, uh, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the screen. And I'll see you guys next time.